On today's Visual Studio Toolbox, Aaron's going to show us how we can write some code, check it into source control, deploy it to Azure without ever having to leave Visual Studio code. Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and joining me today is Aaron Powell. Hey, Aaron. Howdy, everyone. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. And thanks for being so tall. Our <laughs> producer is making me sit because you're so much taller than I am. Well, at least this way I can reach the <laughs> desk so that we can uh, do these demos today. Yeah, I can reach the desk, too, because <laughs> the chair's up tall. <laughs> but that's not what we're here to talk about. No. Um, first of all, introduce yourself. You are a cloud advocate at Microsoft. That's right. I'm part of the uh, Developer Advocates team mm -hmm. at Microsoft. Uh, my focus is JavaScript and .NET, and today we're going to be looking at a bit of JavaScript stuff. But I've been doing web stuff for about 15 years now, so I've seen pretty much everything that's come and gone. Cool. So we're going to look at, um, we're going to create an Azure function yep. um, in Node, and what we want to focus on here is Visual Studio Code and how powerful Visual Studio Code is and how easy it is to bring in GitHub and bring in Azure. So it's all from your cockpit, if you will, the Visual Studio Code. You can, you can do everything you need to do. Yep, exactly. Um, so uh, I've got here the uh, GitHub repo that I've already created, mm -hmm. uh, just to give us a bit of a starting point of a project. And I want to show you how we can have that full workflow, just sort of start from GitHub, but one click to create a new version of this. So I'm going to start by forking this repo into another organization of mine. Okay. And then once that's done, we won't need to use the browser or anything else. We can do everything just from VS Code. Ooh, cool. All right, so now that that's forked, I'll go and grab the URL for the Git repo, and we can clone that. Click Copy, jump over to VS Code, and then launch the command palette. So Control Shift P or mm -hmm. CMD Shift P if you're on a Mac, and we'll use the Git clone. Paste in the URL of our Git repo that we want to clone, and then this will just ask us, where do we want? Now, none of this command line stuff or jumping out to a third party tool to, to work with our Git repos, I just do it straight from my editor here. So I'm selecting the folder, hit clone, and that's going to go away, download all the source code from GitHub itself, mm -hmm. set up the repo that I can open now within my Now VS this code. assumes that you have the Git extension installed in Visual Studio Code, yes? Uh, so or? this isn't using anything other than just the GitHub, uh, the Git stuff that comes with VS oh, Code. Okay. So we don't even cool. need like the GitHub extension. Okay. Uh, we have one that can do some more powerful stuff, ah, right. but we don't need that if we're just going to clone some repositories okay. and do all that sort of thing. Cool. So we'll start, uh, launch that up. It does assume that you have Git installed on your machine though, yes? Yeah, and okay. that will, uh, I think that comes with Visual Studio Code. Um, if not, it's an um, optional Easy installer that you can add okay. kind of quickly. Um, but now, here we go. Uh, here's our repo, um, mm -hmm. ready to go. Um, I have installed an extension for working with Azure Functions. Uh, okay. It just gives me some uh, better tooling support, uh, debug support, and things like that. Uh, it also makes it so that if I was to hit F5 in my debugger, which I'll do now, um, I can run this application locally and so, debug straight off Visual Studio Code. Okay, so what is the application? Uh, this application is a, it's a really simple trivia API. Um, so I, I found a, a couple of um, trivia questions online that you hit uh, an endpoint, an mm -hmm. Azure Function HTTP trigger, that will then give you a list of questions and a bunch of incorrect answers for those questions and the correct answer. Okay. So you can use it to you know, quiz your friends on, on something, and then they can um, try and guess what the, the right answer is. And then there's another endpoint where we can validate what is the uh, correct answer. You know, have, what have they set and selected? Was that correct? Or okay, cool. Cool. So right now we're installing the dependency, so we're running an npm install to get all our node modules that we need to run this. And we're also installing the Azure Function Core tools. So this is the, the, the host runtime for Azure Functions. Okay. Now we need that obviously to be able to launch it, and that's just the dependency into our project. It's defined in the, the Git repo that we've downloaded. We mm -hmm. haven't had to go out and install something else. Uh, so this will just download all of those um, on the first run. Uh, you won't need to do that again for every subsequent run, just the first time. Got it. There we go. So now the dependencies have all installed. Uh, you'll see some logs are starting to come out. That's mm -hmm. the Azure Function host starting up. Okay. We've got our URL here at the bottom, which is our API endpoint, which I can just control click and follow. It'll launch up in my browser. And 
here's the response we're getting back. So right. this is our HTTP trigger. Mm -hmm. I put a breakpoint in VS Code, debug what's happening there, and it's then just the same development workflow you'd have with any other application using kind of any other development tool set that you might be used to. But we'll jump out of the debugger, because um, I want to show you some other things that we can do with VS Code that you might drop out to other tools to do normally. Right. Uh, one thing that you often be doing if you're working on a project with other developers is creating branches so that you can do your changes and then merge them back in rather than everything happening in master and constantly dealing with conflicts. Right. So to change a branch in VS Code, it's really easy. We can just click on down in the bottom corner here where it says master, which is the name of the branch I'm currently mm -hmm. on, or I can use the command palette. I'm just going to use this here, and then I can select to create a new branch. Nice. I'm very familiar with how you get to do all this stuff from inside Visual Studio. Yeah. It's awesome without having to, I mean, you can, of course, go out to GitHub or um, Azure DevOps and do all the stuff there. Yep. But it's way better to be able to do it from inside Visual Studio. The more you can, in Visual Studio code now, so the more you can do inside without having a context switch, because you know what happens, right? You go to the browser to go to Azure DevOps, you're, MSN homepage comes up, and next thing you know, it's 20 minutes later, and you've read yeah. a bunch of articles, and you haven't got anything done. Exactly. Not, not that that's ever happened to me. I've heard of this. Yeah, um, I've no, this. I've, I'm always yes. like, laser focused when I'm going through. <laughs> right. Uh, so we'll create a new branch. Um, so you can create a branch from, which means that if someone else had pushed a branch and you want to contribute to that one, okay. you can use create branch from. Mm -hmm. But we want to create a branch ourselves, so I'll do that here, and we'll do that update response. Let's just change the response that's coming back from our API okay. endpoint. Hit enter. And this is just going to create that branch and then check it out. So swap of us to that branch, and we'll see that in the bottom corner as well. Now it says update response. I can come over and let's open up uh, one of our files. Go on index.js here. And instead of just returning all the questions, because that also gave us an indication of what was the correct answer and the incorrect answer, maybe we only want to give people which is just the correct set of answers. Okay. Oh, sorry, just the available answers, not just the correct one, but all the answers. So we're going to change that and do questions, and we'll return this with, uh, we'll use a, a map function, so just to, to create a new object. So if you're a .NET developer, this is similar to a select. Mm -hmm. And we'll create a function in here, we'll call that question. And here we'll return, uh, we'll do the question itself, which question dot add question. Question equals question dot question. That's, that's not going to be confusing <laughs> at all, is it? <laughs> yeah. And then the answers, uh, we'll do question dot uh, incorrect answers. So this is an array of incorrect answers. Okay. And then we will concat onto that. We'll create a new array with question dot correct answer. Correct answer. Mm -hmm. So that's just going to combine them all into one array. Okay. Um, and then maybe we'll do like a, a sort on that. So that, yeah. you know, we don't know that the last answer right. is always the correct one. Okay. Um, so we can save that. And now I can check that in straight from my um, editor as well. So rather than, again, going to another tool or going to a command line or mm -hmm. anything like that, I can use this palette here on the left-hand side. Click on that, and this is uh, listing all the changes yep. that I've got. And it's telling you you have two in a nice yellow color. Yep. So the first one is that um, when I did my install of the dependencies, the npm install, um, I might have had an updated version. So my package lock, which is just telling me here's all the dependencies that I have in my machine, mm -hmm. um, that's just had an update. So I've probably had a new version um, since I last run uh, through this exercise. Um, so we can include that one or we can ignore that. I'm just going to choose to yeah, discard the change. Because if somebody else has a different set of packages, you don't want to get a conflict Exactly. When you put it, push it up to the repository. Exactly. Or you might want to. I guess you can decide. Right? Yeah. So we, we can everybody should be using the exact same packages, or it's okay to use different ones. It's kind of a yeah a call. And we can we can actually do that diff as well straight from within inside of the editor. Yes. So I can click on the file, and it can show me what the mm -hmm. diff is between those two. So we're only really, really interested in this index.js file that I've updated. So I'm going to discard the change okay. of the other one. And it's going to tell me that you know, those changes are going to be lost. That's fine. I'm not interested in them. And now we can add uh, a, a commit message mm -hmm. for our changes. Updated the response. Is there a way to require that? Uh, it in will. Visual Studio Code. Yes. Yeah, so it will um, enforce any policies that you've got as okay. well. Uh, so if you don't put a message in there, it'll say, "Hey, you can't actually make any change right. yet, or can't okay. commit those changes to your okay. repository." And then we can hit. Uh, 
there's a shortcut key, which is just control enter, or I can hit uh, this check here, which commits that change. And it's because uh, Git requires you to stage as well as commit, mm -hmm. uh, it's just saying you didn't stage the change first. So do you want me to stage and commit? Okay. So again, similar sorts of workflows you might have seen in Visual Studio uh, as well. So we get all that here too. So give that a sec. That's all done. Now our uh, diff doesn't represent anything's changed because that, ch that change has been committed. We can easily jump back to like our master branch. Mm -hmm. And this time, I don't have to mm. create a new branch because it's one I already want. Click master, drop back, and you see that change has yep. been reverted. Cool. But what happens, you know, you brought up before of conflicts that if I make a change and I push that and then someone else in my team makes a change to the same file, well, what would mm -hmm. happen? Like, how do I deal with that? Right. Do I have to now go into you know, GitHub or whatever I'm using as my source control and tweak on that? So let's simulate two people working on the same project right. and enforcing a, a conflict. So we're just going to do a sort on here because I want the questions to be sorted um, yep. by default. So we'll save that. And again, we'll come back here and do our commit through Visual Studio Code. Uh, updated response to be sorted. Commit. Click yes. And now we want to merge that branch right. in. So this time I'm going to use the command palette. Control Shift P. And then we do git merge. So what branch do we want to merge into our current branch? Select my update response. Mm -hmm. And it's going to go, uh oh, we've got a conflict because you've edited some part of the same file multiple times. Uh, and this is what we will see. Um, yep. And there's a bunch of options that you can see across the top there as well. Uh, we can accept the current change. So this is the stuff that's in the current branch that I'm on, so on the master branch. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the, the top change here, um, which is the, the questions.sort. Or we can set the incoming change. So what is the branch that we're trying to merge wanting to give us, which is that bottom half? Right. Um, we can choose to accept both changes. So if it's like maybe it's actually an additive and we just had uh, a, like a white space change on the line above, we can merge the two together. Um, or I can just edit the file in line and do that change. Oh, cool. Um, but I really, I, I only really care about the incoming change because that's a much better way of returning our response. Okay. So we hit accept incoming change. It's going to apply that onto my file, uh, and then we still have an outstanding. Um, update inside of our source control tab here on the left hand side saying that the merge is being completed but we haven't yet committed that to our git repo because we want to make sure that you are certain that you wanted that merge to happen and that the merge conflict was resolved correctly. Okay. So it is, I can hit commit because it's already populated in a commit message for me and that didn't actually work. There we go. Let's. There we go. Sorry, I'd, I'd forgotten to actually stage that uh, that yeah, change. So it, it didn't think that it needed to do anything because it was like, well, no, you you, you didn't do anything yet. Right. And I said, no, no, accept the merge. Okay. So there, that's done. And now this is all with inside of my master branch. That's all cool. Happened straight with inside of our editor. Very nice. Very nice. Um, probably the last thing though is that it's great that it's working on my machine. Yep. But unless I'm shipping my laptop to production. It's not particularly useful, is it? Right. I want to be able to deploy into Azure. Yes. And I want to show you how you can do that entirely from Visual Studio Code. Right click, publish to Azure. Exactly. <laughs> so I've, I've already got the, the Azure Functions tools installed, mm -hmm. and I've already connected this to my Azure account. Uh, so you can see that down in the bottom uh, it says Azure, and it's got my account signed in. Yep. And that so is. So there's an Azure uh, icon down there, right there. Yep. So that's where it. you would go to connect, right? Yep, and I can see Azure Functions that exist across a whole bunch of uh, uh, subscriptions that I've got. Mm -hmm. um, so I could deploy to an existing Functions app if I already had it in there or I was working in a team environment and someone else had created the resource and I wanted to deploy. But I want to create one entirely from scratch this time. So I'm just going to launch the command palette and mm -hmm. we're going to select Azure Functions Deploy to Functions app mm -hmm. and select the subscription I want to deploy to. And then I want to create a new Functions app. Now, I can do an advanced one, which is going to do a whole bunch more steps of asking me a lot more questions. But if I just quickly want to throw this up to test it, I can okay. choose that first option and give it a name. So we'll call it uh, Trivia App. Trivia App. And we'll hit Enter. And select the Node.js runtime, because this is a Node application. If yep. I was doing .NET, then I'd select the, which version of .NET Core I want to deploy to. If it was Python, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to use the node 12, mm -hmm. and then the region, I'm going to choose East US. 
and what this is going to go off and do and set all those resources up for me. So for an Azure Functions app, we're going to need a storage account. Yep. Well, we're going to need a resource group first, obviously. Then we're going to need a storage account. Then we're going to need the Azure Functions app. And we're going to want application insights so we can monitor our application. Right. So that's what it's doing behind the scenes. Because cool. it's going spinning all of those up through the Azure APIs and making sure that they are uh, ready to go um, for us. And it will then deploy our code base up there. Yep. Sweet. All from inside Visual Studio Code. Exactly. Uh, we exciting. haven't had to leave our editor except to do the initial grab of the URL where I get repo. And I think this is, this is really cool. Like I think a lot of people know that Visual Studio Code is a great is great as an editor, right? Yep. So I do most of my development in Visual Studio, but if I just want to look at the contents of a CS file or a XAML file, I pop up Visual Studio Code because it's really really fast yep. and it's a it's great. And I can obviously make changes in there as well. But I think it's perhaps a less known uh, than it should be, which is why of course we're doing this show. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Visual Studio Code, you would expect that inside Visual Studio, since it's your um, you know, full featured IDE, that you should be able to do all of this stuff from inside Visual Studio. Now we're, we're seeing that it's also true with Visual Studio Code. Exactly. Which, and it's great also if you're working in a cross platform team. So mm -hmm. if you've got people that are working on Mac or Linux machines, yep. they can have that same power that, that we've been used to for years right. doing uh, Visual Studio development. So. Um, it's set up all of our Azure resources now, and now it's doing. Um, it's going to prepare our application to deploy. So it's going to uh, run some npm commands to mm -hmm. install the dependencies that it will require for production. We probably don't want the debug versions; we want the actual production versions. And then it's going to copy all those files up for us. Right. We just quickly jump over to the Azure portal, and we'll find our resource group that I have. And this is the one that we just created. Okay. And if we pop in here, we'll see that those are the resources that we need. Yeah. And we didn't have to think about it. We didn't Sweet. even have to know yeah. what those resources that are required are. Right. It just sets them up for us. So again, if you're, if you're wanting to, to quickly get it up there and deploy, you can do that straight from the editor. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm just going to pop up this window as well. And now that our dependencies are installed, um, what it's doing is it's zipping up the, um, the Azure Functions application, yep. and it's going to be copying that up, um, essentially a web deploy okay. that you could be doing from, um, from many different locations. Right, and like most things, this takes as long as it takes. It depends on your network connectivity. It depends on how big the app is. It depends on latency. It depends yep. on all kinds of things. Yep, uh, and as someone who's used to Australian internet, this is happening a lot faster than I'm <laughs> normally used to it happening. <laughs> Excellent. So that's all set up there. We'll come over to our Azure portal again, select through our functions application, and this will load up in a second, and we'll see the functions that have been deployed under the, the tab here on the left-hand side. Yep. There we go. There's our get all questions and our check answer, mm -hmm. and grab the URL for this. In a moment. For some reason, it hasn't generated that. That's very annoying. Let's just click off and click back on. Ah, there we go. Order of execution okay. problem. It was trying to. It displayed the URL option just after I clicked away. So I'll pop that into a new tab. Here's your Azure Functions, and ta-da! Yay! And the only reason we went to the browser was to check a HTTP response. Right. Very very cool. All from yep. inside Visual Studio Code. Exactly. Fantastic. And uh, you said that with the exception of the Azure Function Core tools, everything else that we did was already in Visual Studio Code. Right? Exactly. It was just the one extension. Yep, just the one extension mm -hmm. to be able to deploy. And that was all we needed. Sweet. Yeah. Awesome. All right, thanks for showing us that. No, I'm glad <laughs> to. That's very cool. Hope you guys enjoyed that, and we will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.